In this video, I'm going to create a custom generator and anchor point to add in the uh, paint detail that's stuck within the grip lines on the, um, the grip. Um, it will also add in a little bit of paint detail um, for the rest of the handle, but we'll add additional generators to do that. So, first thing I want to do is go to the folder called grip and select the base plastic grainy material that I created that looks like that and maybe make a couple adjustments to that so I'll scroll down and adjust the roughness so it's not quite so shiny so something like that then I'm going to add another fill layer and on this fill layer I don't need metallic or normal turned on um, and the base color I'm going to just keep at a slightly light gray and height detail actually I don't need height detail on this one and roughness I'm going to bring down some because this paint detail won't be shiny. So with roughness, um, black is all the way shiny, white is all the way matte, and the shades of gray in between are varying shades of shine. So now I'm going to right click and choose add black mask. And this time, instead of just uh, using alphas to create detail, I'm going to use a generator. So I'm going to right click and add generator click on generator and I'm going to use a mask editor to create my own custom generator. So with this, to start seeing what this is doing right now, this is mostly using the curvature map for information. So if I turn that all the way up and then adjust the global balance, start to see what this is doing. So right now, this is looking at the curvature map that was baked. So this, this curvature map that we baked in the beginning of the project. And just adding detail where um, there's uh, changes in the curvature of the, the mesh. So the problem is it's finding the details here, but I would expect that these indented areas would also get picked up with this. But because this information was painted as height detail, it hasn't actually been baked into the normal map or the curvature map, so that information isn't there. So what we need to do is come down to our grip height details, which is that, and we need to create an anchor point that tells Substance Painter that all of this height detail needs to be uh, cal used to calculate the curvature in normal map. So since I have multiple layers of height detail, the best thing to do is go to the top layer of my height detail, create another fill layer, change this to just height, here where it says base layer, I'm going to choose height and I'm going to choose the blending mode here to pass through. And what this means is that all of the layers that are below this will get the information here will pass through. So I'm going to call this grip height details. And then on this, I'm going to right click and choose add anchor point. And I now have this anchor point called grip height details. And that is going to pick up all of the information in the layers that are underneath it. So now that I have that, I can come back to my mask editor and scroll down until I see micro details and where it says micro height, I'll turn that on. Then I'm going to scroll down here where it says micro height, go to anchor points and choose my grip height detail. And then where it says reference channel, choose height. And you'll see now that that information is now being calculated by that generator. I, however, actually want these edges to be um, showing up on the 
inside of this, not the, the top edges. So on the mass generator, I'm going to scroll up and choose global invert. And then I'm going to bring up the curvature and adjust the global balance until I'm getting stuff that's showing just more along the edges of in here. And this is something that we'll keep on adjusting, um, but for right now, that's looking good. Now, right now, the textures that are showing through here, you can see that there is um, texture opacity one and texture opacity two. Right now, those are just solid white uniform colors. So what I'm gonna do is add a couple of procedural um, generators for uh, those textures. So for texture one, I am going to choose, let's choose this grunge wipe. I'm going to put that in. And now I'm going to turn up that, and you'll see now that there's this grunge texture in here that is showing through, um, taking over that um, instead of solid white. And then on the texture two, I'll choose another one. Let's choose this grunge stains, small holler, hollow, and again, come up to my texture two and increase those. So a few things that are noticeable here. You can see that there's this very obvious seam where the uh, texture seam is. So under texture for texture opacity one. I want to open that up and where it says tri -planar, I'm going to turn that on. And I'm going to do the same thing for texture opacity two. So I no longer have those lines. And then I can start playing around with overall settings in here. So I've got this global contrast, which I'm going to bring, or balance, which I'm going to bring up some. I can work with the contrast of my textures, overall brightness of my textures. And right now these textures are being blend together. Um, so you can see that for each of these, there's just overlay mode. They're both in overlay mode. So if I change around that, um, blending mode, it will change the overall look of things. For right now, I'm just going to leave them on overlay and start playing around with overall brightness and stuff like that. So And if you're not liking the look of the particular textures, you can always go in and change those. So on my secondary texture here, I think I'm gonna change that to something different. Maybe this one. And that is going to uh, create a little bit more variation in the uh, look of it. And you can always try whether you want to invert or not the texture.
So you can see now that just playing around with that, we're getting the insides here, getting the indented paint stuck along the edges. We're getting a little bit of an additional overall grunge across the surface. And here the paint is stuck in the edges. And again, I can just keep playing around with things. I might want to increase the ambient occlusion so that a little bit more of the paint shows up in here. You can see that as I do that, I get a little bit more along the edges. I can uh, play around with any of the other values and keep that at zero. Position gradient will keep it more on the bottom part than the top. You can play around with the overall scale. I'm going to just keep that at one for my purposes. And that's looking pretty good, but I don't want the, the uh, paint to feel quite so heavy, so on the mask editor, I'm going to go to base color and I'm going to come over here and adjust the overall opacity of that so it's not quite so um, prominent on there. So I now have that bit of texture stuck within the painted grip and I can now use the same technique for the handle. So I can come up to my handle. I'm actually going to duplicate this. So I'm going to right click and do duplicate layers. And then I'm going to move those up to my handle. Make sure it's over the plastic. And you can see that this now is, again, it's not recognizing the, the um, height detail. So I need to do the same thing for the handle height that I did for the grip. So I'm going to open up the handle height details and I'm going to select the top layer in there, add a new fill. I'm going to call this handle height details. And I am just going to have height on there. I'm going to right click, add anchor point, and I'm going to select this layer and go to height, change the blending mode to pass through so everything underneath that is being calculated by that. So now on my in my handle folder where I put that mask editor, I want to select this and I want to change the height map that we're, the anchor point we're using from the grip height to the handle height details. And then make sure that it is set to height. And you can see that that now is starting to 
get some of that paint detail in here. It's a little bit too much for um, this particular thing, uh, these indents, so I'm going to come in and make some adjustments, probably want the ambient occlusion to be lower. And uh, under that texture inputs, I'm adjusting the balance so that there is less of the the um, detail showing up in that. until I got something like that. And if I don't want quite so much, like say I don't want all of this uh, showing up in here in the white, I can actually then select my mask, add a paint layer, and paint with black, and come in and choose a brush that is maybe a little bit of grungy, maybe this crystal, no, not the crystal, let's say this dirt, and then I can start kind of painting out some of the detail where I don't want it, so that it's not quite so even. So using the generator as a starting point, but then adding in some additional detail to break it up. So something like that. All right, so we've now got some of that basic um, detail added in via generator. And in the next video, I'll start adding more and more layers of detail um, to get that really grungy paint look that's on the actual hammer.